Hello everyone, my name is Gozo Wang and I work as a field application engineer in Modex 3D. Today we would like to talk about process induced properties. So what are the process induced properties? Do you ever feel confused about why the dimension of your product is different to your design value? Or why the performance of your product is not as good as what it should be like? This kind of difference, they come from the process induced properties. In Modex 3D, we can help you to simulate the injection molding process so we can help you to catch these kind of features very well. But we do not just stop here. We can also help you to explore these features so you can include them for your structure analysis model. So today, we would like to show you how to explore these features from Modex 3D and how to import them to Epicurus. Before we talk about the procedures, we would like to help you to understand the process-induced properties more better. So let's go back to the earlier moment. When the injected part is still in the cavity, so when the cavity is filled with the molten material, when the material touch the cavity surface, the material will be stuck there and it becomes the constraint just around the part and this constraint come from the more cavity surface. And at the, at the same time, because the cooling, cooling channel keep working, the cooling channel keep taking the heat away, so the status of the material also try to turn from, turn from the, the molten state into the solid state. And during this kind of transformation, your cavity, the material inside the cavity, will be changed a lot because the specific volume of the material try to change it. But there's constraint around it, right? So this kind of tendency will become the incavity residual stress. And there are two kinds of incavity residual stress. The first one is called incavity thermal induced residual stress. It's just like the, the situation we talked about earlier because it depends on your temperature and the pressure. And the other part of the incavity residual stress is called incavity flow induced residual stress. This, this part of the residual stress comes from the flow, flow, uh, the flow field because the thermoplastic material is also a kind of viscous, viscous elastic material. So during the flowing, the polymer chains will be stretched or compressed. So it becomes the incavity flow induced residual stress. And let's go to the, the, the next step. When the mold open, so the constraint from the mold cavity surface is no longer there. So now no constraint. But the incavity residual stress will become a, a force and try to make your part to become the other equilibrium state. And during this kind of during this kind of balance situation, your part will shrink or warp. That's why we will see your part deform deform. And at this moment is a very important thing is it is not a stress-free state. So even we become an equilibrium state, your part is still with stress distribution. And we just, we always call this kind of stress dis distribution as process induced residual stress. Or sometimes we just call it residual stress. In Mordex 3D and in the result of warpage, we can see, we can check this kind of residual stress. We call them thermal induced residual stress. And then, the, now we would like to talk about how to explore them, how to explore these features from Mordex 3D. In Mordex 3D, we offer a tool, we call it FEA interface. We can use this tool to export the features from Mordex 3D. Here is how, how the tool looks like. So now let me show you here, the first option here, the, 
uh, we can choose different kind of input decks we would like to explore. So we support different kind of FES server. Today we would like to focus on Epicus. And the second option here, this one. This one is about mesh because we know in Mordex 3D, the mesh we use is for CFD. And the CFD mesh is not good for the structure analysis. So we can prepare a mesh we would like to use in structure analysis. And this tool can help you to map the result, the features from Mordex 3D to the uh, mesh you, you prepared. And the, the third option here, this one is called material reduction. The idea of the material reduction is because if we choose the material, it is a reinforcement material, it, so it, it includes fiber. And the fiber rotation will also affect the material module. And then, the, uh, Modex 3D can explore the anisotropic material properties, but these properties depend on each element. So it is a lot of data. Uh, so this tool can also help you to reduce the file size. We can choose different kind of le level reduction. For example, the default one is called middle level. Uh, so we can just reduce the file size by using this option. The fourth one, this one is called flow induced residual stress output. So this one, it means the in cavity flow induced residual stress. And this one, this one is called initial stress output. And what it means is in cavity thermal induced residual stress. And the last one, this one is fiber rotation output. This one can help us to explore the fiber or rotation tensor. The fiber rotation tensor, how to use the fiber rotation tensor? Epcos will call Digimat as the user subroutine. And Digimat will handle the material model in more in Epicurs. So and it, there is a possibility to go further to go to the nonlinear material model by using Digimat RP. And then we would like to have a demonstration to show you how to explore the features from Mordex 3D and how to explore the process induced features into Epicurs. So now let us enter the Mordex 3D. Here, we just on purpose to build a model. We can see this model with two cooling systems. The upper one, we just assign it with the cooling water, the cooling water in 70 degree. And the lower cooling channel, we just assign 35 degree of the cooling water. So we just on purpose to create this, this uh, asymmetric temperature situation. So we can image that the warpage of this part will be very serious. So now let me just hide my cooling channel and show the warpage result directly. Let me just use the larger scale factor so we can see because we on purpose create this environment and so we our part will with serious warpage. So today we would like to is try to include this kind of feature as the initial condition in your structural analysis. Uh, by the way, in the warpage result, we can also check the thermal induced residual stress. This is the residual stress I ever talked about earlier. And now we would like to help you to understand how to explore these features. We can use FEA interface. FEA, interfa FEA interface offers several options. So we would like to choose Epicus because we would like to focus on Epicus today. And we would we would also like to choose the map. Use this option to choose the mesh we prepare. So we can choose this IMP file. This IMP file is the format for Epicus. So you can create a mesh by using like Rhino, HyperMesh, or Epicurs. And we would like to choose initial stress output. We would like to expose the thermal-induced residual stress. 
and we like we need to choose the, the location the folder we would like to export so we just choose this one and click OK and then we would like to export the data now we need to wait the programming run and we will get the features from Mordex 3D After we export the features from Mordex 3D by using FEA interface, now let us go. Let us enter the folder. In this folder, we can see there are three files. So this one, this one log file. Log file it just record the information during the exporting, and we can see there is a IMP file. So IMP file is the format for AppCurs. Now let me just open this IMP file. In IMP file, we can see the rule in an IMP file. We can just use this line to do, to have to have an explanation. So the rule in the abacus is start from a, a single star, and and this one is a keyword. So the keyword star from a single star, and then. We like to define the node, and we also assign this node as the as a node set. We name it as N A L L, and then here it's called node number one. Based on the coordinate of this, so here is the rule in in uh, in in the IMP file. So now let me jump to the other. The R keyword. So like this one, we would like to define the element. So the element we we assign it as type C three D eight, and we also name it as E L one. And element number one is built by these nodes. And then let's jump to the other group of the keyword. So here is called solid section. The, the idea of the solid section, solid section is we just build a connection between the element set and the material. So here is we just uh, try to assign material number one on element set number one. And here we can see here is about the material. Uh, right, just right here. Here is the definition of material. We can see there are a lot of information they, they, they relate to that relate to the material. That's why we just we can sometimes we suggest our user to, to do the material reduction to reduce the file size. So here we just assign we just define the material. We name it as material number one and it is a it is an elastic material and an isotropic. And here is the material properties, material properties, uh, the material parameters of an isotropic material. And at the end of this IMP file, here is initial conditions. By using this keyword, we just assign the initial condition on this on this model. And here we the command import the other file, this STS file, as the initial condition. So now we would like to open the STS file. So in STS file, we can see the, the format in this file is all the same. And it include the stress components. And we just assign this stress component on element number one. So this is how it works. So if we like to build more, more just like if we, if we would like to define the load or different kind of boundary condition on this structure analysis, analysis model, we can just work on this input deck directly. Or we can also 
import this input deck into Abacus CAE. Abacus CAE is the user interface of Abacus. So now let me open Abacus. So the way to import the input deck is we can right click the model and import, choose IMP file, and we like to choose the file we just export from Mordex 3D. we can just import it. It will also include a STS file. We, we record the initial trace and it takes some time. So now we, we successfully import the input deck. So now let's check this, in, this, this model. So under the model tree, we can see that this one is the, the model we just import. And this three is, is three, the other three model we would like to show you later. So now let's check this one first. So after we import this model, we could enter property module and enter the property. And we can see a lot of material they are defined in this model. Just to, so the material here, just like what I showed you earlier in the input deck. So they are the uh, isotropic material properties. So we can check the elastic. So they are anisotropic. And uh, here is the anisotropic material parameters. And the other feature, I would like to show you is we can enter the load the load module and enter the predefined field here is the initial condition we would like to define so here we can also see there are a lot of initial conditions here so here is the initial stress condition we we just talked about in our input deck so we can import them and then we can check them by this way and the way to use the input deck is we can go on to build the other, the other boundary condition we'd like to define. For example, let me just open the other one. So this one, this one is the same as the earlier one, but we, I just define three more boundary condition. We can see there are three more boundary condition just on three corners. And we, we, can just, we can just submit this job and we don't need to assign any other load and we can just see how the warpage is by only consider the, the in-cavity residual stress. And let me just open this model. So now we open our model. So this model is the same one as we import, but we just define three boundary conditions on three columns. And now we can check how the deformation is. And shift to the, the display of the, the de deformation. So we can get the similar deform, deformation result in this model just like what we see in, our, in Modex 3D. But there is still a little bit different because we use a different mesh. Even we use the tool to map the result from Modex 3D to Abacus. But the mesh is different. So the result is a little bit different. And now we like to, I would like to show you what kind of difference if we only use the ideal model. The ideal model I mean here is we don't consider any an isotropic feature and don't consider the, the in-cavity residual stress. So what I'd like to do here is I just build two models. The one model is we use the isotropic model and assign it as a cantilever beam and I assign the pressure on the top surface of the cantilever beam. And the same one, I just use the model we export from Mordex 3D. And we also assign it as a cantilever beam and assign the same 
node on the top surface and we can see how the difference is. So now let me show you the load, how I define the load on it. So this model is the ideal one. So the isotropic material property and let's check the pressure. So just like this. So this is the ideal one. And the one we export from Mordex 3D, we also assign it as a cantilever beam and assign the same pressure on the top surface of it. And now let's check the result. So now let's shift to the post-processing module and open another window. So this one we like to open the isotropic one. And this one we would like to open an isotropic one. And it takes some time to open the file. So later we will see how the difference, how the difference of the deformation and how the difference of the stress distribution. So here, on the left hand side, this one is the ideal model. So just like we open just like the, the way we always use to build a structure analysis model. We didn't consider the process in these features. So the material is the isotropic, and we just assign the load on it. It will show just like this. And on the left hand side, on the right hand side, this one is the model. We consider the anisotropic features, and we also consider in cavity residual stress. So now let me shift to the dis display of deformation. And let me go back to the first step, the result of first step. So in the first step, in the first step of this model, we just build, we just assign the initial condition on it. We don't assign any extra load and we can see it will there is still deformation on it this deformation comes from the in cavity residual stress so we can export these features from model 3d and you can you can import them and include them in your model and you can just get the equilibrium stat by using any fes software and then now we would like to assign the load. After assign the load on the cantilever beam, it will become like this. So on the right hand side, we can see there are totally different deformation, deformation on it. So by considering these detailed features, we can catch more deep, we can build more accurate model for your structure analysis. If we check the stress result, We can also see there, there are totally different results on our stress distribution. So by using this one, this tool, we can consider more detail on your structural analysis model. So today we introduced the idea of the, the process in these features. And we also tell you some detailed theory of the process in these features, how the process induced features become and we also talk about how to export them from Mordex 3D and how to include them in Epicurus. If you are interested in these features, please feel free to contact us. There are more detailed options can help you to, to, to work on your structural analysis model. Thanks for your attention. Have a good day. Bye bye.